Welcome to the fifth video in this series on creating atmospheric nighttime visualizations in V-Ray for Rhino. In this video we're going to be adding the base materials to our scene and we're going to start by adding in a texture for the grass, the concrete, the timber and glass elements on this building. Now to begin with we're going to open up our V-Ray asset editor, pull this over here and also open up our frame buffer just to give us a view of what the building currently looks like. I'm going to be using these windows and the kind of Rhino window behind, so we're flicking between these during this video. And to start with, let's just do a quick test render of the current view behind here, just by hitting the interactive render button to load this up. You can see here we've got our sort of white material on our building. Now we're going to leave this running in the background while we start to add a few of my materials in. And we're going to begin with adding some material to the grass on this kind of ground texture here. All of the material maps I'll be using are freely available on websites like Polyhaven and Textures.com and I'll put a link in the description for these websites so you can also go and download similar textures to the ones I've been using in this video as well. So we'll begin with the grass texture here and we're going to open up our V-Ray Asset Editor and we're going to begin by making a new material. And to do this we can either click on the Material tab here or go into the Create Asset tab, Materials and go to the generic material. Now 99% of the materials you'll be making will be used via the generic material here and the grass will start with this one as well. So once you've made it it will jump up in your materials and if you just want to isolate those materials you can click on the material tab here and it will just show our materials. I usually rename these just by double clicking and typing in the name of the material you're creating. Now in order to start to edit this we need to open up the right hand tab of our asset editor to see all the properties of this material. And by default, you'll see it gives the material a kind of gray color, um, no reflection, it's quite sort of matte, and it's very sort of generic looking there. If we want to apply this to the ground with which our kind of building is sitting on to this sort of white plane, we can do that a couple of ways. One might be that we select that object and we right click the material and go apply to selection. Or if you've set up the scene in the same way I've been doing, where we've got all our materials on different layers here, we can actually just apply the material straight to a layer. And this is a much more efficient way of adding materials in your scene. So what I'm going to do is just right click on that material, apply to layer, find my kind of grass bank layer and apply it on. And there you can see we've now got that kind of gray material on the ground. Now obviously this isn't looking like grass at this stage, so we need to start to give it some kind of colour and texture to look like our grass material. To do that we're going to be using this diffuse value first to set the colour of the material. And you can set the colour just by clicking on the colour option here and actually just kind of scrolling through and picking a new colour for that grass. But as you can see it doesn't look very realistic, it's very sort of cartoony. If you're trying to make a sort of matte color render in this way, you can just use block colors for materials. But for this one, we're actually going to be using what's called texture maps, which can be found on those websites I mentioned earlier, which would be sort of repeatable textures, kind of like these ones shown here, which are kind of textures of grass, which are going to repeat across this surface. Now to add these in, all we need to do is go to the right of where it says the color here, and it's got a little kind of box here, which is a texture slot. And in here we can add in our maps and our kind of textures, images. So if we click on that, it will ask us what kind of texture we want. And we're going to be using the bitmap slot to add in a photo or an image into that texture slot there. Now I've set up a few textures I'm going to be using here. So let's just locate those. And we've got a kind of grass texture here, which we're going to be adding in. So we can just select that, hit open. It will give us a kind of preview of that texture and then we click the back button to go back to our material. You can see it's now updated. Now what you can see, because I'm rendering this at the same time, is also updated on the surface here. But on these banks it's looking okay, but then on the ground here it's looking really, really stretched. And the reason for this is that we haven't done what's called texture mapping on this ground. So by default it will just stretch the texture to fit over the whole of this surface. So if you download a texture like this and it's around kind of one meter by one meter in actual sort of size, it will just stretch that over the geometry when you drop it into Rhino. And so obviously we've got a very big bit of landscape here, but the texture is just stretching over the whole thing. So if we want to make that more detailed so that when we kind of up close, it doesn't look all warped, we need to texture map this surface. 
Now to do this, we'll just stop the render for now. We can select the objects in the scene. What I'll usually do is I'll select them all at the same time because we'll want to size it so the kind of sizing of this material is consistent across all the objects. So I'll just right click on that grass bank layer, select objects to select all of those objects. We're going to go to the properties panel, go to the texture mapping here, and we're going to apply what's called a box mapping here, which is essentially drawing out a cube which will correspond to the size that our texture will be on this surface. Now, to start with, I'll usually just kind of roughly draw the cube to whatever size I think is about right, and it will give a little preview here. We'll hit enter, and then we'll go back to the texture mapping panel, and we'll have a look at this X, Y, and Z size here. And this will give you actual diameters of what the size of your texture is. Now I'm gonna just kind of tighten this up and we'll make it 15 meters by 15 by 15. And I'm gonna go back to my camera, which we're rendering in, and we're gonna have a look and see what this texture is looking like in this view, like so. Now I think that's looking a bit better. It might be a little bit big in the foreground, but I think as we move back, it's looking quite nice. And I'm trying to wanna to get a kind of good relationship in this background area. We're also gonna be adding some bits of grass geometry onto this at a later stage. So I think for the time being, this grass is looking quite good. If you wanted to tweak the sizing, you can always select the object again, go back to your texture mapping and just adjust the value here. And if you do, as you can see, as I change it, it will start to kind of resize it to correspond to that number. So that's the basics of just adding texture mapping to your objects. Now we're gonna add a few more materials and we'll leave this render running in the background as we do. So the second one I want to add is a concrete for these kind of larger walls here. So we're just gonna to go to the material, add a new generic material again. Go on, type in concrete. We're gonna add in a new diffuse color in the same way, adding a bitmap. I'm gonna add this kind of red concrete texture onto here, like so. I'm happy with that. And we're gonna apply that to our kind of walls layer, like so, there. So there's our kind of concrete in place. Now actually with this concrete, I also want to kind of give it a little bit of reflection so it's quite shiny, but I want to make it look quite patchy as if certain bits are shiny, certain bits are rough. Now in order to add a reflection to an object, we need to go to the reflection part of the material here. And this reflection color will determine how reflective the object is. If it's got a color of black, it will mean it have a reflection of zero. And if it's got a color of white, it will have a reflection of 100 or kind of full in this way. And you'll see there it's got that shiny surface. And as we've done that, you can see it's now reflecting bits of light from the sky there. So the kind of more we do that, the more reflective or shiny it will look. Now, it might be that you don't want it to look as crisp as this. And as I was saying, I kind of want it to look a little bit patchy in my reflection. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna load a texture into this reflection color as well. So we're gonna load in a bitmap in there and I've got this kind of patchy texture here, which is patchy kind of black and white. And what this will mean is it will kind of vary the reflection as per the texture. So wherever it's white, it will be shiny. Wherever it's black, it will be kind of muted or dull. So if we throw that in there, and if we sort of zoom in on this, you can now see that we're getting this kind of patchy reflection going on on the surface of this object. It's just making it look a little bit more detailed. Look that some bits have been sort of polished, other bits have been like left in a kind of matte way. And it just adds that extra level of detail to there. Now we haven't texture mapped this either. And it's always good to texture map your object so you have control over the sizing of this texture. So what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna select those walls again, right click, select object. Make sure we've deselected first any previous objects that we have and then we'll apply a box mapping again. Now it's always good to just check this in the view to see if this sort of sizing is right. I'll kind of keep my selection of those walls on for now, just in case I need to tweak that sizing in any way. So let's open up our frame buffer again, and we'll just see if we need to kind of tweak this. So it's looking a little bit big. I might make it a bit smaller here. We can get a nice sort of patchiness across the surface. And it's always good when you're doing textures to always go back to the camera that you're rendering in because obviously this is the view that we're going to be seeing. So all we need to do is make sure that the kind of textures are looking good from this angle because this is the view that we're rendering. So I think that's 
they're looking a little bit stretched. Sometimes with this you might need to reload the render engine just for it to kind of reset that texture. And I think that's looking quite nice there. So that's our sort of concrete in place with that slightly shiny surface there. Now I'm going to quickly also do the timber. The timber's very straightforward as well. We're just going to be kind of making our generic material here in this timber. We're going to add in our kind of timber colour, which is down here. There we go. And let's apply this to the timber material there. Now I'm also going to add a little bit of reflection to this. So sort of very subtle. We just want it to look like it's kind of been slightly polished, but I don't. I'm not going to kind of try too hard on the timber material. I think that's probably about enough for this. Um, we can always texture map it as well, and I'm going to reduce this glossiness down because I don't want it to be this sort of shiny. If we reduce the glossy value down, you'll see it, the kind of the reflection becomes a little bit more matted, um, and this helps it kind of look like it's just been sort of polished slightly. That sort of timber. So I think that's kind of working well for what I wanted to do there. Now the last material we're going to make here is this glass texture we've got, which is this sort of white piece here. And to make glass, it's actually slightly different. We're going to still be using this generic material, and we'll call this glass. But actually this glass isn't going to have a colour because it's going to be see-through, transparent. We want to give it a colour value of black essentially saying that it's got no colour for this object. And we're going to apply it to our glass layer so we can see this sort of as we do it. So as you can see, it's completely black there. Now we want our kind of glass to be shiny. So we're going to add the reflection colour up to a white so it's fully shiny. And you can see we're actually getting reflection of that sort of light and the sun from our environment map on there as well, which is interesting. Um, we want it still to be fully glossy, so it's very shiny there, but we also want it to be see-through. And the kind of see-throughness of the object is controlled by this refraction value here. Now this works in the same way as reflection. So when it's a value of black, it hasn't got any see-throughness. It's completely solid. And when we up that to a value of white, it essentially turns into a glass material and becomes transparent. Now it's quite subtle to see here, but you can kind of see we're starting to see through that glass in certain areas. And actually, I think with this one, for us to sort of refine this texture, I'm going to look at it in this view here because it will allow us to sort of zoom in slightly and kind of have a look in a little bit more detail on there. And there you can see that the glass is basically clear, completely clear, and we can kind of see into that object. It's quite dark, so it's a little bit more difficult to see in the render preview. But as we've kind of made it a clear glass object, we can barely see it within the render there. Now actually, I kind of want to color tint this glass in a sort of tone of green. And we can do that in this refraction panel as well. And there's this kind of option here called fog color, which allows us to kind of give a color to the depth of that glass. Now to do that, we need to just adjust the fog color in this panel here. And if we click the color option, scroll down to a sort of green value, and let's just sort of pick a kind of mid green there. You'll see suddenly we've got this kind of dark green glass going on, giving us some nice kind of green light as the light passes through it. Now at the moment it's much too dark for me, I want it to be a little bit lighter. So in order to do that, we essentially just need to adjust this saturation value of the glass here. And you'll find with the fog that it doesn't really change much. It gets darker quite quickly, but it's very hard to make it lighter in the scene. And actually it's easier to do this in this saturation sort of meter here if you roll it right down to the very end, and we're going to put it on a very small value, sort of 0.15. Because the fog is very sensitive, you need to almost lower it down so it's almost zero. I think we could probably do a little bit more than that. And there we have our sort of green tinted glass there. So it's very sensitive. So whenever you're kind of playing with the fog value, always note that you'll probably have to lower that saturation right down for it to kind of become a little bit less sort of um, coloured in that way, a little bit less deep with the sort of tones of the colour that you're using there. So there we've got our sort of nice green glass. Now there's one other thing I want to add to this glass here, and it's that I want to kind of give it the effect that it's almost made out of glass bricks, as if we've kind of got lots of glass blocks that are making up this surface. 
Now you could do this by modeling lots and lots of bricks and then giving them this material but there's a lot easier way we can do it by just using texture maps. And if we scroll down we're going to close up this reflection and refraction. We can actually use this bump map here to give a kind of fake texture to our materials that isn't actually in the geometry. Now if we open this up this has got a kind of texture slot just like the other materials do. If we click on that texture slot we can add in a kind of bump map to this and I'm not going to add it in via a bitmap this time I'm actually just going to scroll down and find the tiles option here and if we add this in we can now add in essentially a fake texture to this brick and you can kind of see actually here and if I sort of pan down let's sort of slightly move our camera angle so we can see it's a little bit better like so there we go you can see with this tiles on it's actually giving us that sort of lines from those blocks on the surface of our glass here. Now I'm going to try and make this replicate a brick texture. Now we don't need a colour in this bump map because all it's doing is it's saying whatever's dark is pushing in on the geometry and whatever's light is pushing out. So actually we want to make sure that our tile colour is just a white colour because we want that to push out and then we want the mortar to push in slightly to kind of replicate the brick. So I'm going to make that a black tone. I also want to kind of make a few more segments. So let's do it 15 by 15 for now. So it's a little bit more detailed and we're gonna do some texture mapping on this as well. So we give this a more uniform size. And I'm also gonna go down to the stack layout just to sort of offset that line shift to essentially replicate that brick sort of look. Now, as well as this, let's texture map the glass while we're here. So we'll just go back to the layers select all the glass objects like so and as we've done before just go to our box mapping we can minimize this for a second draw out a box and like I said don't worry too much about the initial size of your texture map box hit enter and then we can resize it here and let's just do it five by five by five for now and this corresponds to your units by the way so it's five meters by five meters by five meters so here you can see we're starting to get that effect going. It's still a little bit big. So a couple of things I'm going to do to tweak this down now. We're going to first tweak that mortar width here. So at the moment it's 0.5 by 0.5. I'm going to lower this down to a 0.2, I think, to make it a little bit narrower, like so. And I think we're going to kind of make this a little bit shorter in the Z value. So it squeezes it a bit maybe even lower than that let's do it a two and let's make these a four so there you can see we're getting that kind of glass block effect now it's working quite effectively it's giving us that sort of effect as if this wall is made out of glass bricks and not just of a single plane there so i'm quite happy with how that is looking i think so once you've got that we can then just hit the back button to go back to the material and we can always go back and edit that just by clicking in the texture slot in your bump map there. So now we've got our kind of main textures in place. I'm going to just stop this preview and we're going to go back to our camera to have a look at how these are looking in the scene. Now, as you can see here, once you've added in your textures, it might be certain things that you want to tweak. And for instance, on this, I'm getting that reflection of the sun in this glass, but it's a little bit too intense for the scene I'm trying to create. I quite like the glow, but I don't like to see the sort of whole sun being reflected there. So you might need to go back and tweak your texture maps or your environment maps because now you're getting sort of more reflections than you were anticipating with your materials. So we'll just quickly do that by jumping into our textures again, selecting that sky as we rotated it before, just in the texture placement in the previous videos. We can actually rotate it not just horizontally, but also vertically. And if I sort of maybe let's try... 10 degrees up or maybe actually a minus 10 degrees to move it upwards a bit there we go so we've just sort of moved it up and around and now we've still got that glow from the sun but not the full sort of reflection as i've said before don't worry about the background for this because we're actually going to be replacing this now for another texture for that sky and i think we're going to finish on that with this video that we're just going to add in a fake sky into the background in order to kind of replicate a more interesting sky which we're going to be using here so in order to add this sky in actually the way i usually do this to give myself the most control 
is by drawing out essentially a big vertical plane in the back of the scene. Now I'll usually do this by just looking in the camera view and noticing when the sort of start of that plane just goes off screen like so drawing it across until it goes off to the right hand side as you can kind of see on this corner here and then drawing it upwards like that something there and once we've got that oops we'll sort of leave that in place for now and we're going to go back to our render make sure we're on that camera and back to our scene you might also when you make this object just want to put it on a new layer let's make a new layer called sky here we can make it a kind of blue tone just so we remember it and make sure that's switched across and then let's open up our V-Ray Asset Editor and our Frame Buffer again. And we're just going to make a brand new material, but this time instead of generic we're going to make this emissive because we want to actually have the sky kind of giving off a little bit of light in the scene as well. So we'll make that an emissive material. And for the colour we're going to go onto the texture slot, add in a bitmap again, and I've actually just downloaded a nice kind of evening sky texture here that we're going to be using there. And then we can just select our object and apply that sky to the selection. Let's just call that sky as well. So now that's applied, let's give that a little preview, see how that's looking. And there you can see we've got our sort of nice sky image in there. It might be at this stage that you just don't want to see the buildings in my case, so I'm going to sort of move this down until I don't see them. If it's not quite get to the top, we can always scale this up. So I'm just going to use the Scale 1D tool here just to stretch it upwards slightly, just so it's kind of off screen. We just kind of get that in the right place. I think that's about right there. Um, it also might be that it's a little bit too bright in here. So if you need to kind of lower that sort of brightness, we can just drop the intensity down of this just to match the kind of mood that we're trying to create. And I think around a sort of 0.3, maybe even a 0.2, we can keep it quite low. We can always up it later, is about right. So there we have our kind of base materials in there. So we've just gone through and added in our kind of grass texture, something on the concrete, some kind of glass effects, and this sort of fake sky in the background. Now in the next video, we're gonna actually be adding in some water into the foreground of this scene to give a reflection on this. And I'm gonna do a whole video just on that sort of water material and how we add that in because it becomes using kind of the techniques we looked at in this video but a little bit more involved to kind of try and get that water looking really nice within our scene. Now if you want to watch any other videos going into more detail on texture creation I've done a lot of videos on making different materials in V-Ray and Rhino which go in a little bit more depth on those particular materials and I'll put those in the link in the description as well. But I hope you found this video useful and in the next one we're going to go into more detail adding in a few more complex materials into this scene. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video.